a lot of aspiring homers, which is what I'm calling work from homers from now on, tell me that they'd love to work from home, but they don't have a laptop or a computer. So being a tech geek myself, I decided to create a guide for budget laptops that you can use to become a homer. And you can use the laptop for other things too. I don't need to know the details of what else you're going to do. Okay, I'll briefly talk about the spec requirements and then give you my recommendations. If you just want to see my recommendations, you can just click on the links down below. Scroll down, click on those. Um, but first things first, make sure that you're using a Windows computer. You won't get a usable Mac under 12,000 and any other operating system will just cause you more problems than will help you like Android or other OS's. Oh, and if you're a Linux user, you shouldn't even be watching this video in the first place. You should know more about computers. Okay, there are a few things important in a budget laptop. Um, in order of importance, first of all, RAM. Second, CPU. Third is the keyboard and the touchpad. Fourth, disk space. And fifth is the size. You might wonder why disk space is so low on my list. Yes, it's important, but most modern computers will meet your disk requirement needs no matter what, and you actually don't really need a lot of disk space for most of your work. If you do need temporary disk space, that's what USB drives are for. Okay, first of all, we have RAM or memory. So RAM and CPU those go hand in hand. CPU or processor, those go hand in hand. These are what determine how fast your computer is. So using a simple analogy, RAM is how fast your computer runs, while CPU is how much you can do while it's running, so it's juggling ball or something. So if you have a lot of RAM but a slow CPU, your computer will be fast but won't be able to multitask. If you have, a lot, if you have little RAM and a fast CPU, you can multitask just very slowly. That means there needs to be a balance between the two, RAM and CPU, especially if you're on a budget. So how fast do you need to go, and how many tasks will you be needing to do at the same time? I won't really get into deeper discussions, and just cut right to the chase. For RAM, you need either 2 or 4 gigabytes of RAM. 2 is usually enough, but will cause your computer to be slow at times. With 4, your computer will rarely slow down unless you edit videos. Okay, on to CPUs. This gets a little bit more complicated as there are literally hundreds of different CPUs out there. If you're buying something made in the past three years, you should be okay. You likely won't need something really fast unless you're doing video editing or some intense gaming. In those cases, 12,000 pesos is nowhere near enough. There are Intel Atoms, Celerons, i3s, i5s, and i7s. And their competitor, AMD, also has equivalent products. However, it doesn't really matter what you get as long as it's recent within the past three years or four years. Even cheap CPUs perform well enough nowadays for you to, able to, for you to be able to work. You might have had bad experiences with Atoms in the past, but believe me, the atoms of today are different than the atoms of 5 or 10 years ago. In fact, the laptop I use every day uses a modern Intel Atom processor. Okay, for the key keyboard and the touchpad, a homer types a lot. You need a laptop whose keyboard and touchpad are comfortable enough so you don't develop any wrist strain, which would prevent you from working. And actually, this usually goes hand in hand with screen size. So the bigger your laptop, the bigger and more comfortable your keyboard would be. At a minimum, I'd use an 11-inch laptop with the keyboard covering almost the entire width of the laptop. Anything smaller than that, and I couldn't use it properly. Also, most touch pads at this budget are bad. They're, they're really bad, which is why I recommend getting an external mouse like the one I have here. Any mouse would do, and believe me, any single mouse would be better than your touchpad. Also disk space. So when it comes to disk storage, first of all, I'll talk about the two types of disk storage. There is SSDs and HDDs. 
The main difference between the two is price and speed. SSDs or solid state drives are much faster than HDDs or hard disk drives, but are more expensive for the equivalent storage space. For me, SSD is the way to go. You don't really need a lot of space on your computer to get work done, and the speed difference is worth it. If you want to save thousands of songs or movies, then just do what I did and get an external USB hard drive for storing those. You don't need the extra space for work, and work is our top priority here. Storage-wise, I'd say at a minimum 32 gigabytes, preferably 128 or more. At 32 gigs, you can install Windows and a few programs that you need on your computer, as well as have some files, but you won't be able to save much more, like lots of photos. Most of your work will be online anyway, so you don't need that much space. You could go for more space, but like I mentioned earlier, more space can get expensive with SSDs. And lastly, we have the size. Your minimum should be 11 inch, like I mentioned earlier, due to keyboard size. Anything bigger than that is just personal preference. I know some people who use a minimum of 13 inches or 15 inches, but you have to remember that the bigger the computer, the more expensive it is. If something is big and cheap, then it's probably old, and I don't think that rule just applies to computers. Weight is also a factor that goes along with size. If you're thinking about carrying your laptop with you on the Jeep, which I don't really recommend, or to coffee shops or around the mall, you'd want something light. And usually, smaller laptops are lighter. So what laptop do I use? I actually have both a desktop and a laptop. The desktop I use for more intense projects like video editing. And the laptop I actually use for almost everything else. Unfortunately, the laptop I use can't be purchased in the Philippines, but I got it for around $250, which is right around $12,500. It's this. It's the 11-inch Acer C720 with the Atom quad-core processor, 4 gigabytes of RAM, and 128 gigabytes of storage. It's not the most powerful laptop available, but I can do everything I need with it, include edit videos and pictures sometimes. However, it runs slow when I try to edit videos which is why I use my desktop for that. So I have a couple of recommendations. First of all, uh, if we're looking under 12,000 pesos, there's the Acer V5. With all the requirements I mentioned earlier, this is actually the only computer that fits those requirements and it's under 10,000 pesos. I haven't used this personally, but I've heard really good things about it. Since it uses an AMD CPU, not Intel, it's cheaper than Intel counterparts. But it, the power is equivalent to an i3. It also has 4 gigabytes of RAM, which is really nice, and is 11 inches. Unfortunately, it seems out of stock right now on Lazada, but at 8,250, it's a really good bargain. My second recommendation is the HP Stream 11. Now I know this is slightly more expensive than the Acer V5, but it's still a good choice. I've used this myself, and there are only two main gripes I have with this laptop. First of all, it only has 32 gigabytes of storage. Still usable, but not ideal. You'll quickly need at least a USB stick. Secondly, and probably more importantly, it only comes in baby blue or purple. I think HP wants us to buy their more expensive computers, which is why they made this really budget, good computer, ugly. I have a special mention, which is the Cherry Shift 10. This seemed another good budget computer under 10,000 until I read the reviews. The reviews complain about how the build quality is really bad, and I don't think it's worth you risking that money to buy a Cherry laptop. I'm sorry, Cherry. So if you want the complete list of all the laptops in the Philippines under 12,000 pesos, which fit the requirements, then check out our full list below in the download link, which includes a list of all the laptops and their specs that, so that you can make your decision. All right, I hope I'm able to help, and let me know if you have any questions in the comments below.